Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm going to show you how to reinstall your engine back into your Razor 900. This is part six of our engine rebuilding series for this Razor 900 motor. We went through this and replaced all the worn out components. And one thing I want to point out is that we need to make sure we follow the break-in procedure for this. And this is our 2014 Razor 4900. So for this specific machine, Polaris recommends the break-in procedure be 25 hours of drive time or 15 gallons of gas, whichever comes first. So when you're doing that, Polaris recommends just warming up the vehicle by driving it slowly and taking it easy for the first little bit. And then once you're at operating temperature, you're gonna vary the RPM and that's gonna help your ring seat and all the other components seat correctly. So when you do this, just keep in mind, you don't want to keep a constant RPM at any spot. Just always varying the throttle. And then what I like to do, I'll take the machine for a shorter ride the first time. That way I can bring it back, check the condition of all the fluids, make sure no bolts loosened up, and then you can put the rest of the hours or run the rest of the gas through it. Once you've done that, then you're ready to change the oil and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we get into all the tools, I do want to point out that we're using an engine hoist. It is possible to do this job without it, but this is going to be a much easier and safer option. To do this job, we need some common hand tools. We also have a half inch and three eighths inch drive torque wrench. These are the bike masters. We're also going to use this clutch cover removal tool. The thing that's nice about this is it's flexible and it gets all the hard to reach bolts on that clutch cover. Then the other things that are noteworthy are these clutch tools. So we've got our clutch holder. This one is from Polaris. It's gonna set our center distance from the primary drive clutch and the driven clutch. And then this one right here is gonna spread the sheaves. Other than that, you'll need some safety glasses, rags, and some rubber gloves. Now, if you need any of these special tools like the torque wrenches or clutch holding tool, check out our website and pick those up. Now that we have the engine on the engine hoist, what we're gonna do is remove the engine stand adapter plate. Now that we have the engine stand adapter plate out of the way, we're gonna reinstall the starter motor and then the transmission mounting plate. Now with the starter motor, you wanna inspect these O-rings. It's a good idea to replace them. And then also, I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease on them. That's gonna help this install a little bit easier. Now these two bolts torque to seven foot-pounds. Now we'll take our transmission mounting bracket and we'll install all six bolts onto this. Now keep in mind, when we torque this down, we do have a torquing pattern and all those bolts we're gonna to torque to 44 foot-pounds. It might help to have a friend hold the engine still while you torque these bolts down. With the transmission mounting plate and starter motor reinstalled, we can now lower our engine back into the frame. Now to line up these mounts, I'm just using the tapered portion on this punch and that's gonna help line up the bolt holes and just make it a little bit easier to get the bolts in. Once we have our front mounting bolts in place, we'll loosely install the remaining mounting bolts. Now that we have all our mounting bolts loosely installed, we need to take the centering tool and what this tool does is make sure the center to center distance is correct for your clutches. So we have this bolt that's gonna go through the primary drive clutch. And for our machine, we're using the number two slot. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put this on the transmission shaft first, and then to get this bolt to install, it's, ours doesn't line up right now. I'm gonna move this transmission a little bit. And how you know it's lined up correctly is the fatter part of the bolt is gonna be centered on the hole on the alignment bar. And then the rear hole that goes on the transmission shaft should slide all the way up to the stepped collar on that shaft. 
Now that we're lined up, we do have a torquing sequence for all these mounts. So the number one is going to be this top bolt on the clutch side, and number two is going to be just below that. So both of those we're going to torque to 64 foot-pounds. Now we can move to the other side and torque numbers three through seven. So this is number three in the sequence, and it wants us to torque that to five foot-pounds. So this one's going to be number four, and we're going to start torquing these to 44 foot-pounds. This one's number five. And this one here is number six. And then back to the first one, this is number seven in the sequence. Now that we've finished the torquing sequence for those mounting bolts, we'll torque the remaining front mounting bolts to 40 foot-pounds. Now normally we'd be torquing the bolt from the nut side, but just for clearance reasons, we have to go from this other side. Now that we have the motor mounts torqued down, we can remove the distance centering tool. And when you pull it off, you want to make sure it pulls off easy. If it doesn't, that means that you're not lined up quite right and you might have to repeat the tightening sequence for the mounting bolts. Next, we'll remove the bolts that hold the engine hoist to the motor. Next, we'll reinstall the two crossbars this front bar, we're going to torque these bolts to 40 foot-pounds, and the rear crossbar, we're torquing those bolts to 17 foot-pounds. Next, we'll install this heat shield that goes on the side right here. And now we're ready to install the headers. So to do that, these exhaust manifold gaskets, I've just put a little silicone on them, and that's going to hold them in place. After that, we'll line up the header. Next, we'll install the exhaust springs. Next, we'll install the cooling hoses. Now install the seat shield on top, and then we've got one that goes right next to it. This heat shield right here just has that double sticky tape that goes on it. Then this heat shield that goes on the side, we've got a bolt going through right here. And then this one on top, we've got three of these plastic rivets. Next, we'll install the spark plug wires. To do that, we have our PTO wire and the magneto wire. So to get these installed all the way, something that helps me is I'll spray a little silicone spray on here. And that helps it clip in right into place. Next, we'll loosen up the hose clamps on our intake boots, install the throttle bodies, tighten the hose clamps back down, and start reconnecting our hoses and electrical connectors. All right, now we can take these electrical connectors. We've got the trees that hold these into place, and we'll make the appropriate connections. All right, so what we need to do now is take this fuel line and we're going to have to put it in the correct position. So when we took this motor out, we moved it completely out of the way. So we're going to have to snake it in under here. Might have to move these spark plug wires just a little bit. All right. So this one's in position. I'm going to slide that onto the fuel rail. I want to make sure we didn't get any dirt on here. So that's snapped all the way on. Now I can press down on the green connector. Now we can route our return line. 
And again, making sure that the connectors are completely free of any dirt. Snap them on. And now we can move on to some of the wiring. Now we'll go ahead and connect the positive cable to the starter motor. And again, I'm just using a 10 millimeter open end wrench to hold that still. And we're just gonna get this nut a little bit snug. Next, we'll take this negative cable and route it into place. Next, we'll connect the cooling temp sensor, then the throttle position sensor. All right, moving up here, we can now connect the IAC valve. All right, so I'm gonna take a cable tie and run it around the wiring harness right here. Next, we'll put the throttle cable into its holder. All right, so the crankshaft position sensor we'll put in the holder. And then we'll make our connection. Next, we'll connect the primary wires to the ignition coil. After that, we'll make the connection with the stator wires. Next, we'll install the air box and slide these boots into place. Next, we'll tighten down the hose clamps on the intake boots. Okay, now we'll take the air box cover and we're gonna lay this new air filter into it and making sure that stays into place, we'll install the cover onto the air box. All right, now we'll put these two upper mounting bolts into the air box. All right, at this point, we're ready to reinstall the clutch components. So to do that, we're gonna raise the rear of the machine, remove the left rear tire and that lower mount on the rear shock. And that way we're just gonna have clear, easy access to all the components. All right, so we're ready to put this inner cover on, onto the machine. Main thing to keep in mind with this is the fuel lines are gonna run on that inner channel. And then the outer one, you've got your battery cables and your throttle cable along with a vent tube from the gas tank that's gonna go right here. And then we'll cover it up, put that guy on, and there's four rivets that go in it. Now we'll install the seven bolts that hold the cover on. At this point, I'm gonna take a rag and some contact cleaner and just wipe off these clutch sheaves. So we're gonna do the same thing on the, end, on the end of this crankshaft. I'm gonna clean that up. Might wanna make sure there's no grease on it. And then we'll also clean this transmission shaft. And we are gonna put a little bit of grease on here on these splines. So after that, I'm gonna put the driven clutch into place. All right, now that we have the driven clutch in place, we can now reinstall this bolt. We're gonna to torque this to 40 foot pounds. And if you're reusing the bolt, it's gonna be a good idea to put a little Loctite on there. Now to help get this clutch on, we actually put this transmission in gear. And with this in gear, we're gonna have somebody hold the brake while we torque it down. All right, now we can put the primary drive clutch and the belt on. To do that easiest way, we're just gonna take this clutch tool. This is just gonna separate the sheaves. I'm gonna take this belt. We're gonna make sure it's going in the direction we can read it while we install it. And so what I'm gonna do is rotate this a little bit so I can get around the tool and just install it as an assembly. That's gonna be your quickest way to get it done and to me, just the easiest. So once we've done that, we'll put this bolt in. So I'm gonna get that 
as tight as I can by hand. And I'm going to put the machine in neutral. I'm going to put a rag over this frame and then I'm going to use the clutch holding tool to torque this down. All right, now we'll remove our clutch holding tool. And then we'll remove the spreading tool. And we're just going to rotate this a couple times till the belt climbs to the top. And the reason we do that, if you start going with the belt all the way down in here, you might have a chance that you'll damage or burn the belt up a little bit. And it'll be kind of like starting in high gear. So you just want to work it all the way to the top. So now we can install the clutch cover and the bolts. We're going to use this SLP bolt installation tool. It's made to work with these clutches, so it's flexy. That way we can get around everything. Next, we'll reinstall the shock and the wheel. After that, we'll take our air duct, put that into place, and then we'll tighten the clamp. All right, at this point, what we're gonna do is fill the vehicle with fluid. So starting back here with the engine oil, I'm gonna remove the cap. And if you're not very good at this, you can get a funnel, but if you're good like me, just pour it in. After that, at the front of the machine, we'll pour in our coolant. With our coolant topped off, we'll leave the radiator cap off and at the back of the machine, we'll loosen the bleeder screw above the headers and we're gonna let all of the air bleed out of our cooling system until we only see coolant coming out of the screw. I'm gonna use a little silicone on the IAC hose and install it onto the air box. After that, we can reinstall our cargo bed and reconnect our tail lights. Once you have all your wires routed, and for these tail lights, we just ran these wires down the backside of this bumper. Once all that's routed and all the electrical connections are made, you can go ahead and tie down the wiring harness just using some zip ties. Next thing we'll do, we'll hook this breather hose up. This is for your crankcase vent. All right, now we're ready to reconnect the negative cable on the battery. All right, at this point, we need to finish bleeding the cooling system. So what we're gonna do is start the engine in a well-ventilated area. We're gonna let the fan cycle for two cycles. All right, we've let our engine warm up, came up to operating temperature. Our fan for the radiator came on and shut off two times, so that's two cycles. Now we let the engine cool off completely. We just let it sit for a few hours. It's room temperature, so we're going to remove the radiator cap and top off the coolant if we need to. We're going to loosen the bleeder screw on the engine that we loosened up earlier. That way we make sure we have no air in the system. And then we'll check the oil, and from there we can continue with the install process. At this point, we'll reinstall our rear tail lights, and then after that, we're gonna put all the bolts into the cargo bed and tighten them down. Now we can reinstall our service panels and the seats. And that's it for reinstalling your engine into your Razor. 
This also concludes our engine rebuilding series. If you need any parts that we used or the special tools, check out our website. We offer free shipping on orders over $75. We have aftermarket and OEM parts. Now, if you need more how-to videos, check out our YouTube channel. We have a lot of helpful content on there and subscribe. Thanks for watching.